Hey there. So I just wanted to mention before I begin, um, I'm going to include several resources in the description below. Number one being a blog post by a person named Gorin that has a summary of space repetition research. It's a very good resource. Um, definitely read over it if you got the chance. It'll give some of the theoretical knowledge for what we're doing. Number two is going to be various links that uh, for um, people who have already used mathematics and Anki and their methods for doing so. Um, number uh, three is going to be a reference sheet for MathJax that I have found extremely useful. And finally, it's going to be a, um, a link to uh, free downloads for an example deck from my own personal math flashcards. Now, if you happen to find this video useful, you know, please subscribe. It helps me out. And in addition, that you get to see new videos that I upload and when I live stream. Okay. With that being said, um, let's get started. So the, one of the first things I want to cover are the three general card types that I use. The very first one are key terms, formal definitions, and equations. Now, these are going to be your simplest kind of cards, usually some kind of like basic front back or a simple close deletion. The next is going to be a concept question kind of card. Now, these may be a bit longer sometimes. They're a little bit more complex, and they may ask you about certain properties of some kind of mathematical structure. For example, like a system of linear equations and how many solutions does it have? And the final card type are exercises and examples. These are gonna be the ones that are a little bit longer and harder to break down, but they're gonna be what you're learning the key terms, definitions, equations, and concept questions for is so you can use those things in the procedures and sol for solving problems. The next is going to be the actual settings I use for the card types that I have, the various add-ons that I consider important for this kind of work, external tools and tips about using things like MathJax and close with MathJax, and caveats for using mathematics with space repetition, flashcards, and the various pros and cons with that. Okay, so the very first example here is going to be an example of a key term. And this card in front of us here, it has a very simple front back close deletion. On the left hand side, I have the term where I've utilized the hint field. And on the right, of course, is the actual definition of it. And as we go through the card, we'll see that the term pops up for us. And of course, the other side of the closed deletion is I've closed the uh, actual definition and we have the term on the left and shows on the other side. Now, in general, your key terms are going to be more informal kind of definitions, usually just written in simple language. Next, I have an example here of a formal definition. Now, here is a system. This particular definition is on a, um, a linear equation. And it's a little bit more complex than the previous one where you just have simple English. Here we have some equations thrown in, but for the most part, it's still pretty simple. As you can see right here, we just have linear equations and the variables x1 through xn, and we have the definition on the right hand side. And of course, just like with the other card, I also have the definition closed out. And then of course, we have the uh, actual definition being shown. Now, the example I've shown here is a fairly simple one, probably easy to remember for the most part, but the formal definitions can get a little bit more complex sometimes. And it would make sense to use more closed deletions in the definition if it happens to get a little bit too unwieldy. Here we have an example of an equation. And this particular example is one of the properties of the definite integral. And it is one of addition of two functions of an integral. And just to show you the front and the back here, we see that you, know, you have the answer on the other side of the equation where we've closed out one part of it. And of course, since this is the close, we each close out both sides of it. So we happen to know both. We can go back and forth on this equation. In general, my equation cards are going to be cards that usually talk about some kind of property, whether they be trig properties like for or like the properties of the definite integral here, um, trig tables, derivative tables, things usually that are like this equals this. OK, and here's an example of a concept question. 
This one's asking about a system of linear equations and how many solutions it has. And as we go through it, we'll see that I have closed, you know, each one individually, and I don't show the others as we go through here. And eventually you get to a point where you show all of them with the goal being, I want to be able to recall this at any time. And just to know that, you know, a system of linear equations either has no solution, exactly one solution or infinitely many solutions. Now for cards like these, being able to use close overlapper is going to be essential. And it's a huge help compared to the default Anki way of doing it. And I'll cover that in the add-on section. And here we have an example of another concept kind of question where I'm asking about the um, what are the elementary row operations. And it's in the exact same format as the other one to where I ask each one individually until I get to the end and ask all three as we can see here, and just skipping to the end right there where we ask all three. Now here's another example of a type of exercise card. Here I have it asking the question, describe the following set by listing the elements within its braces, and we're given a set. Then moving on to the answer side, it's just a simple set of one, two, and three. Finally, I have a slightly more complex card here, one that's asking to differentiate this function. And as you can see, I've broken it up using close overlapper again. And what it allows me to do is it allows me to step through each part of the equation and solve as I go through. So for example, we have the first question there, and then we were given that portion. Then we're asked the second part of the, you know, the next step of the equation, and we're given that. And finally, we're asked the final part, and we're given the actual answer at the end. Now, one very important thing to remember about exercises and examples is that in general, you're not trying to figure out the solution. You want to include the process in this because that's what you're trying to learn. You're trying to learn the process, not the answer. If you had just done the answer, you could easily memorize the answer and that's not what you're going for. When it comes to grading exercise cards, since you're mainly focusing on the process, that's generally what you're trying to grade for. So for example, if you happen to get the process right, but maybe you mess up some addition somewhere, I personally would mark that as good. Now, if you mess up the process, um, then that's definitely where I would mark it wrong. All right, so that covers it for all of the, um, the card types. Now I wanna move on to the actual exercise settings. And these are the exercise settings I'm gonna be using for the exercises. So. First thing we see is steps, and these are in terms of minutes. Now I use three different learning steps, one at 30 minutes for when I fail a card, the first initial learning. Then its next step is gonna be a day. Finally, the next step itself is going to be seven days. And the reason I do these steps is because I want to avoid ease hell. And the graduating interval is set to 18 days because 2.5 times seven days is going to be roughly 18 days. Okay, so that covers all of the card types. Now I'm gonna move on to the actual exercise settings that I use. And this is an example of one of the settings that I have for new cards. Um, the first thing is gonna be the steps. I have three different steps, one for 30 minutes, one for a day, and one for seven days. I do this in order to avoid the problem of getting in an ease loop. Um, the next thing I have is going to be the order. Um, I always show the cards in random order because I'm going to be drawing from a large selection of exercises, and it doesn't really matter what order they're presented in. Um, next is going to be new cards per day. Since generally that exercises take a long time to do, anywhere between like one minute to five minutes generally, you don't want to overload yourself with too many. You want to spread these out a lot. Right. Next is the graduating interval. Um, I have this set to 18 days because the graduating interval is just 2.5 times the last step interval, which was seven days. So it rounds up to roughly around 18 days. The easy interval I have also set to 18 days, generally because I don't use easy intervals. I either fail or pass for myself. And the starting ease, I just leave at default. And finally, I have the berry related new cards until the next day checked because closed I have closed deletions in my uh, deck. 
And those closed deletions, I don't want to see until the next day. If I have some kind of, you know, exercise that I have to step through, I want that to be spread out. Now, moving on to the review settings, I have the maximum reviews per day set at five. Because if your maximum card is going to probably take around five minutes long, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing these exercises. Right. Around 25 minutes a day doing exercises is probably going to be more than enough. Right. The easy bonus, I don't really bother with. I leave that at default because, as mentioned before, I generally don't use easy intervals. Um, the interval modifier is also set to default. And the maximum interval, I just personally have it set to mat whatever the max is for Anki. But you're more than welcome to set it for whatever you want. To me, it doesn't matter a whole lot. And once again, hard interval, I don't bother with. And same thing as the uh, new cards, I also have the barrier related reviews until the next day turned on. All right, and finally, I have the lapses. So the lapse interval is going to be set to 30 minutes, just like we have in the new card interval. Um, the new interval that I have is set to 75%. That way I'm not going all the way back to the beginning for a card. In general, like if you happen to forget part of a card, it's not going to be a huge deal. You probably don't, you probably didn't forget every part of the card. Maybe just like one or two pieces of it. Um, min minimal interval is set to a day. Um, the leech threshold I have set to four lapses because if I'm having... If I'm going to do something more than like four times, well, more than likely I need to sit down and learn that card. And I would prefer to do that sooner rather than later. And the leech action I have to tag. So that way I can just go through each day, see if I have any leeches and learn those. The question cards are really not a whole lot different than the uh, exercise cards. The only thing that changes here is the maximum number of reviews per day. And the reason it's set so high is because the, um, the amount of time it's going to take you to actually complete a question card is roughly between 6 and 10 seconds. So you can fit a lot of these in per day. Essential add-ons. The very first add-on that I recommend that you go ahead and get is Close Overlapper. It's done by Glutanimate. I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly, but I have it put up here just for that purpose. And it's the thing that allows you to make um, overlapping closes a lot easier. It takes away a lot of the tediousness that you would need to do like manually. Another one by the same author is Better Tags. Now, this isn't necessarily essential essential, but it really helps to be able to organize large amounts of flashcards in the hierarchical tag tree. Next is Auto Ease Factors. And this is an add-on that changes Anki's um, grading algorithm. Now, normally when Anki like, does the grading, it just bases on like how you grade your own card. So if you press good, it just applies the default 2.5. And then if you mark it as hard or as easy, it'll, adjust some, it'll add some other factor to it. This add-on goes through your cards and adjusts it based on certain historical factors. You can look at the actual documentation for it for a better explanation, but it seems to help out massively. Finally, there's the searching PDF reading note. This is a extremely good add-on that is incremental reading for Anki. And if you're not familiar with that, um, it's basically just like a reader that helps you organize and keep track of what you've read and helps you organize flashcards based on like pages and where you get them from. Now for the actual tools that I use and various tips. The first one, and probably the most essential, if you're gonna be doing a lot of creating um, like math flashcards, MathPix is going to be a really good tool for this. It's a subscription-based service around $5 a month. It's well worth it. And it's an optical character recognition uh, system for math. So it'll automatically, you take a picture of something, it'll automatically invert it to um, MathJax or LaTeX for you, depending on what you like. 
it's very good and i would suggest getting this number one if you plan on doing a whole bunch of mathematics speaking of math jacks and latex you're going to want to decide whether or not you want to use math jack or latex and there's pros and cons to each the biggest one being that math jack is easier to set up and to use whereas latex is a lot more uh, difficult to set up and there's a little it's a bit more fiddly but math jacks doesn't have as many options as latex does there's a lot more packages and things available to it so you it's a trade-off in either of those directions and you can use both at the same time if you really wanted to i just prefer math jacks that's my own preference when using math jacks and since we're using a lot of closed cards here we want to avoid probably one of the biggest problems that people have when they're trying to use like math jacks or latex and close cards is that you have to put spaces between the double curly braces any equations any math you put in there if there's a double curly brace it will stop the close card from working the only double curly braces you should have are the beginning and the end closes in addition, when you're using MathJack's arrays or alignments, don't close line breaks. If you happen to have a line break, the double backslash or alignment symbols, you want to put your closes somewhere in between those and not include them in the close. Some important caveats. Number one, Anki should not be Anki. Some important caveats. Number one is that Anki should not be your only method of study. You need to actually sit down, work with the material, and break it down into your own um, words and understanding. The main thing Anki is used for is to maintain the knowledge that you've already acquired. This should not be a replacement to your studies, just an augment to it. When actually making cards, you gotta remember there's always gonna be some kind of time trade-off here. It can take a long time to break down specific cards, especially when you're talking about like exercises. This is why in general it's a good idea to stick to examples. That way you're getting the main idea of a chapter. Generally in books you have a large number of exercises. And if you're looking to augment your problem solving ability, you can add more exercises. But remember that since these things take so long, it's probably a good idea to make your exercise intervals a lot larger. Um, I would even suggest somewhere like your graduating interval being close to 30 days. Unfortunately, complex ideas don't benefit as much from space repetition when you actually compare them to like simple tasks. And there's research that shows this. But it's important to keep in mind that while they don't benefit as much, they still do benefit from utilizing space repetition. So there are gains to be made from using things like Anki for these for like mathematics. And finally, if you happen to like my work or like the videos here, uh, feel free to like, um, subscribe, or support me on my Patreon. Every little bit helps. Thanks. Hey, so if you like the video, feel free to uh, like, comment, or subscribe below. Um, and if you want to support me directly, you can head over to my Patreon, where I included the uh, free exercise deck, too. All right, every little bit helps, and I appreciate every bit of support you give me. All right, thank you.